The first question anyone asks about pruning hydrangeas is, when should I prune my hydrangeas? And as with many things in gardening, there are several answers, including when it's most convenient to you. As long as you understand the basic principles of pruning hydrangeas, and they're not difficult, and I'll explain them in this video. It's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog, and I'll put links to any resources I mention in the description below. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube, tap the subscribe button. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded, tap the notifications bell. So when should you prune your hydrangeas? The Royal Horticultural Society here in the UK says late winter, early spring, which for me here in South East England is February. But some people go earlier. Garden writer Tamsin Westhorpe gardens at the beautiful Stocktonbury Gardens in Herefordshire. And she went on Instagram in January to say that she was pruning her hydrangeas then. I asked her why she was doing it so early and she said that Stocktonbury Gardens opens to the public on the 1st of April and there's a lot of jobs to do in spring so she needs to get ahead with the ones she can get ahead with. And hydrangea pruning is one of those. At the other end of the spectrum are people who urge you not to prune your hydrangeas until mid-spring, which is definitely March around here. And that's because the dried flower heads do protect the buds beneath from sudden bouts of really icy, snowy, bad weather. An occasional frost probably won't harm them. And you know your own winters. If you regularly get bouts of ice and snow of several days in late February, early March, then don't prune your hydrangeas till later. But otherwise you can fit your hydrangea pruning in when it suits you and one of the things to look for is when the new growth is appearing on the stems, the new green growth, as it is at the moment. I visited Signature Hydrangeas, one of the top UK hydrangea growers, to talk to Roger Butler about how to grow hydrangeas and I'll put that video in the description below. But one of the things he said was that one of the main reasons why your hydrangeas don't flower is that you've pruned them wrong. But that doesn't need to make you feel nervous about pruning hydrangeas. There is one method that will work for all kinds of hydrangea. And that is that you remove the dried flowers and you take them off just above the first pair of fat buds that you come to just beneath the flowers. You then need to take out any dead or diseased wood out of the centre right from the base. And really any kind of hydrangea will do fine if you prune it like that. But good pruning can lift your garden in ways that you never imagined. So I also consulted garden designer Posy Gentles. She doesn't just design gardens, she also renovates and restores them. And she is very keen on pruning your hydrangeas to bring out the maximum for their shape and their flowering. The reason why different hydrangeas need to be pruned differently is that some flower on old wood and some flower on new wood. Posey explained that you can tell the difference between new wood and old wood because the new wood is darker and the old wood gets increasingly pale. The newest wood of all are those shoots that come out and they just have a single green bud at the end of them. So really don't cut those off. So let's look at the three different types of pruning hydrangea. Hydrangeas that flower on old wood are best pruned with the basic hydrangea pruning method that I've already described. That includes hydrangea quercifolia. That's the oak leaf hydrangea, and you'll know you've got it because it's lost a sort of oak-shaped leaf. Just take off the dead heads, sometimes they'll just even fall off, and take out any diseased or dead stems. In fact, you can almost not prune hydrangea quercifolia at all. At the other end of the spectrum, are the hydrangea paniculata and the hydrangea arborescence. And the most famous hydrangea arborescence are Annabelle and Incredible. You'll know if you've got these because they've got big, showy, ball-like flowers at the top. And these can actually be pruned right down to 10 inches above the ground. You can actually do the simple basic prune if you prefer to, but if you cut them down to about 10 inches above the ground, as I've done with my hydrangea Annabelle, those new shoots will shoot up and flower gorgeously in just one year, but of course they won't be very strong by then, so you'll need to support them. And the third kind of hydrangea is the macrophylla, which are divided into lace caps and mop heads. 
And those flower on both new and old wood, depending on what varieties you've got, and some actually even flower on both. But don't be too alarmed. The basic pruning method will work well for lace caps and mop heads. But as Posey says, if you just do that, what you'll get is a sort of eventually a rather congested shrub, which is a rather ugly lump with a lot of flowers growing around the outside. And she wants something more beautifully shaped, which will show off its flowers better. When she moved into her house, there was a lace cap hydrangea there, which had indeed got into a neglected lumpen shape. So she'll talk you through how she prunes this hydrangea. Well, this is quite an old hydrangea and um, I've been trying to renovate it for the past couple of years. When I come to prune it, I look inside it and look at the new growth that's coming up, this dark coloured wood with non-flowered stems on it. So I see those coming up, there's some at the bottom coming, which is good. And also the old stems, some of the new growth is coming from higher up on the old stems, which is good because with this hydrangea, because it's in a raised bed, I want there to be flowers at the bottom and flowers at the top. I also want to take out some of the old stems to allow the new stems to come through. So the traditional idea of just deadheading down to two strong buds is, is fine as it stands, but you also really want it to be looking at this sort of thing and you don't want to take something off if below it you're leaving a lot of dead wood and non-productive wood. So it, it's like other shrubs. You, you take out some of the old stems to let the new stems come through. So what I will do is prune down to buds here, like this. And... What I'm also doing is leaving some of this old, the last year's wood, which you can see is pale, but taking some of it off, like here, because this encourages new growth, which is what you want. Um, the new growth is the dark, shiny brown. You can, if you look inside, you can see there's quite a lot coming up from the bottom. And every year you can get rid of some of the bigger bits that are getting a bit you know, like this is all a bit of a mess up here. Or you can just take it down to some newer shoots. So because I want this higher, I would keep a framework of the old wood and let the new wood come out about there. But at the bottom, I'll take it lower. And I'm, I'm sort of tidying it up, really. So I'll take that out. Um, well, there's a dead one to take that whole stem out there and try and leave a few nice buds down here. This one, you see I've left some of the old wood, but also some of the new. There's a bit of it, take out the dead. Take that down to that bud there and that bit off. More dead. Posey's second hydrangea, however, she wants to prune to maintain the maximum height. Well, the, this hydrangea is important in my garden because it, I need it high because it provides a, a slight sort of division in the garden, which I can see beyond. So I want this bit to stay high and this is the view through where the path goes. So I want this to come down here and to have the flowers down here. So I keep the old wood, a framework of old wood, which is the white wood, which has very little growing out of it and prune it up at the top to keep the flowers up there. At the same time, I'll take some of the old wood out when it's starting to look ropey, but I also keep a framework. But when, like this, for instance, is starting not to look that productive and is looking pretty ugly, so I'll probably take that out. Afterwards, I went back and I pruned my own rather neglected lace cap hydrangea and I took away quite a lot of the oldest and thickest wood but don't take away more than one stem in three. I also discovered some completely dead wood in there and you can take that away at any time. Posey also mentioned that now is a good time to fertilise hydrangeas. If you keep your soil in good condition by laying a layer of compost or well-rotted manure, about two to three inches once a year over the soil. You'll keep your soil in good condition and most plants will be perfectly happy with that. But if you ever want superior wow factor flowers, then extra fertilizer is a good idea. 
I was watching a video about hydrangeas on the lovely Garden Answer channel and Laura of Garden Answer said that she often uses rose fertiliser for her hydrangeas and this strikes me as a very sensible tip because of course spring is the time to put slow release fertiliser around your roses so while you're putting slow release fertiliser around your roses you could simply add some to the base of your hydrangeas as well don't scatter fertiliser generally across a border because they won't get to the plants that really need it and fertiliser as such doesn't improve your soil. Hydrangeas are a wow factor plant in the garden, I think. They start flowering in the summer and they go on and they often change colour as the winter comes and then their heads are often one of the best things in a winter garden. They've become quite unfashionable recently but I think they really do deserve a comeback. And there's a playlist with more wow factor flowers at the end of this video. And do let me know what wow factor flowers you love in your garden. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.